Hey guys, welcome back. Hope you're doing well. Today I'm in Lightroom again, and if you saw my recent video about Lightroom, you'll know that I've uh, been diving back into Lightroom and having a lot of fun editing, uh, partly because of all the amazing masking tools, which are frankly just really uh, amazing. I guess that's the word. And uh, also though, I didn't talk about this so much in that last video, but also the color tools have gotten better and better. Now, if you've been here before, you know I like to use color to really enhance my photos and play with color and that sort of thing. And a tool that I use a lot is split toning. Well, split toning has been in uh, Lightroom forever, but a while back, I mean, this is a year ago or something, they upgraded it basically, and they now, uh, now call it color grading. And really what they've done is split tone, uh, split toning is, uh, separated highlights and shadows, and then you can adjust color tones within them. Color grading goes a step further, actually a few steps further, but it basically includes mid-tones as well. So it gives you incredible control over color in all three of the major tonal areas, which is awesome and really helps you kind of fine tune and really control color in your image. And that's something that I love. So I've got this photo here. Now I've already done some things in the develop tab or in the develop uh, basic pane. That's the, uh, that's the word I'm looking for. Uh, anyway, so it looks like that now, right? So it started like that. Cities at night, I love to shoot. Don't always like the yellowy kind of uh, look to it, especially the sky. So I want to make it more blue. And one way to do that is to lower the temperature. The challenge with that is that's a global adjustment. And of course, by definition, because it's global, it impacts the entire photo. And I can't really make things much bluer without really getting into that kind of scene, which I don't want to get into. I don't want to overdo it. So I was at, you know, 18 or 20, something like that. And what I want to do is go control a couple of things and then I want to jump into color grading to show you how you can really fine tune those edits. So the first thing I'm going to jump into is just doing a sky mask. And honestly, uh, I mean, it needs to be cleaned up around the edges, which I'm not going to do, but that was really quick and really powerful and really pretty accurate. So I'm going to pull the exposure down a little bit. So I want to darken that. And of course, I want to make it cooler, as I've already uh, kind of indicated. I just, uh, if you've been here before, I just kind of like skies that are kind of blue. It's just, it, it is what it is. Um, but I'm happy with that mask, and I don't even mind that it overlaps those edges a little bit. It actually adds a little shadow around those edges, which I actually think looks uh, good here. So the second thing I'm going to do is get a linear gradient, and I want to go play a little bit with this foreground here, simply because it's, uh, it's quick and easy to do, and a linear gradient uh, is perfect for that sort of thing. In this case, it's going to be a slightly brighter exposure, maybe about like that. And I'm going to add a little bit of texture and a little bit of clarity. So, you know, 10 or 12 on each, just to give it a little bit of pop. So if I uh, cover this up or hide that mask, if you will, disable it, there it is before. And there it is now, just a little bit of extra crunch and a little bit of more impact. Uh, and now that I've done that, I'm going to close the masking menu, but I'm going to come back to it at the end because there's one more thing I want to do, but I want to save that for the end. And what I really want to get into is color grading, which is really what I'm here to talk about. So if you would like more videos about color grading, let me know. I'll cover it in more depth in future videos. This isn't necessarily a deep dive. I'm just going to touch on some of the things that I've been using. This is kind of the overall view of the three different tonal areas. I kind of prefer to jump into the individual uh, channels, if you want to call them that, shadows, midtones, and highlights. And then this other icon is global. That's hue, saturation, luminance across the entire photo. But I wanted, uh, what I want to do here is separate these by those tonal areas. By the way, if the arrow that you have right here is pointed sideways, you can click it to drop down and see the H, S, and L sliders for this tonal area. Also at the bottom of each of these, you have a blending and a balance section. I won't really be using those in this video, but blending is basically how does this tonal area blend with the other ones? And balance is if you go further to the left, it's just like in split toning. If you go further to the left, you get more of whatever shadow color you pick. Whereas if you go more to the right, you get more of the highlight color that you pick. Again, I won't be using either of those in this video, but I do want to dive in and use some, uh, some of the shadow, midtone, and highlight adjustments. Now it defaults here in the center, which is white, which is basically saying I've got no color added to the shadows. And you can grab this and you can drag it around and you will see that all the colors are changing. Uh, also, where this little circle here is, um, if I start dragging that to the outer uh, edge of the circle, the colors get more intense. You will notice the saturation slider is moving 
left and right as I move this thing kind of left, right, or up, down, depending on what uh, direction you're facing, right? So if I wanted more green in the shadows, which to be clear, I do not, but I'm doing it because it's obvious, uh, I get over here and I could go like that and really saturate those shadows. Now, I don't want that at all. I need to look at my notes, but really what I want to do is get a hue in the blues because I like to kind of put a little bit of blue in my shadows, uh, especially in night shots like this. I just think it looks good. So I was in the 220s, maybe something about like that. And saturation, I can dial that in up or down. I want to go about a 25 or something like uh, about like that, say 26. And so if you look at the before, there it is before and the after. It's just a little bit of blue controlled specifically in those shadow areas, which I think looks great. And what I want to do now is pop over to midtown, midtones and do uh, another adjustment. So what I'm going to do here is go a little bit warmer. So I'm going to do something about like about a 30 or so on the hue and the saturation actually right about there, maybe about a 32, but I'm going to take the luminance up and this will actually brighten those uh, those tones as well. So if you look at the before and after now, I've got a little bit of warmth in kind of the midtones. And generally speaking, there's a lot of midtones in an image. So I cooled off the shadows. And one of the things I'm doing here without really talking about it, uh, but I'm going to talk about it now, and that is one of the things I like to do is play with complementary colors. So blue and yellow are complementary colors. They're across each other from across from each other on the color wheel, which you can actually see here, right? Blue and yellow. And so I'm playing up those colors in this image. I'm taking the shadows, making them a little darker and a little bluer. And then the midtones and highlights get a little bit warmer and a little bit brighter. So I'm playing off that color contrast, if you will, because they're complementary colors. And frankly, they just kind of look good together. So one more time, there it is before any of my color grading, and there it is now. And so I think that's looking pretty good, uh, but I do want to go into highlights and do just a little bit there as well. And so again, I'm just going to grab this, and I need to look at my notes. My hue is about a 15, so that's going to be over here. You can always just drag the slider if you want to get a little bit easier control than just grabbing the circle and moving it around. My saturation here, I'm going to go up. You can see as I'm moving this saturation, how that slider inside that color wheel is moving. So uh, my saturation here is about a 35, and I find it a little bit easier to move the sliders, but I wanted to show you how you can use these as well. Uh, but my luminance, I'm going to take down just a tiny bit, like a negative five or six, something about like that. So basically just created a little bit of warmth with a little bit more intensity in that warmth in the uh, highlights as well. So now if I turn off color grading, there it is before, and there it is now. So a little bit of warmth uh, in those midtones and highlights, a little bit of coolness, or uh, you know, a little bit of a temperature shift, let's call it that, in the more shadow areas. And again, I'm playing the cool and warm off of each other, but I think that color grading, I mean, it's incredibly powerful, and for me, um, as I said earlier, I love color and I love split toning, but this takes it to the next level. It's really incredible. And what it does, as I said already, is really just give you fine-tuned control over color in all the major tonal areas. So this is something that I would use, honestly, on just about every image because it's so impactful. The difference between something like this and something like HSL is HSL, you're basically going to be saturating or changing the luminance or the hue of those colors in all tonal areas. So if I saturate the blue, let's say, I'm going to go like that. It's going to go, you see how the blue is getting over here, and it just doesn't look right because that's a global tool, whereas the color grading is basically about fine-tuned control, and it's about being specific and targeted. And that's how you get a really more, uh, more finished-looking edit, for lack of a better word. I can't tell you how many photos I made in the early years where I just, you know, did my base photo edits and then I went to saturation and vibrance and just dragged them to the right. And I didn't really have any control over color. I just liked color. You can still get beautiful, vibrant, rich colors, but have better control over them. And that's exactly what color grading does for you. Now, having done all that, I want to go back and add one more mask. And this one is actually going to be, I'm going to create new mask, and this will be a, a radial gradient. And I'm going to put that kind of down in here something about maybe like that. Uh, and I'm probably going to drop that a little bit lower and I want to drag it a little further out and maybe actually a little bit lower uh, and maybe a little bit bigger like that. Something about like that. But what I want to do is invert that mass. So I'm going to right click here and I'm going to click invert and it's just going to flop it. And what I'm going to do is basically just create a vignette. Uh, this is a great way to 
control a vignette, actually a little bit better control over a vignette than actually using the vignette tool. But I'm going to drop the exposure a little bit, which is basically the vignette. But the cool thing here is that you can also adjust color temperature and things like that. And I already said I kind of like cooler stuff in cities at night, except for where the pockets of light exist. My radial mask is basically um, maintaining the sections that are kind of brighter and that I kind of warmed up and played with in color grading. And now with this vignette, I'm coming in, leaving that alone, isolating that with the inverted radial mask, but I'm getting the areas around it to be a little bit cooler. So I'm going to do like a negative 15 or 20, something about like that. And it just gives it a nice little touch, I think. So if you look at the before, and the after, just a nice little finishing touch. And that's really my whole edit. Let me show you the before and the after. That's what it started like, really bright, really yellow, kind of washed out and no real blue or coolness. And to me, a night shot should be cool. This is kind of what it should be to me, just mentally. And in cities, like I said, I love the interplay of those warm lights with the, the cool night sky. You just don't always get the colors that you want. And that's where color grading comes in and gives you all this massive amount of control over your image. And if you just zoom in and look around, you can just see the massive difference that we made in this photo by just some moving some things around and playing with color grading and really just up in the overall look and mood of the photo. And that's one of the reasons I like color grading. That is the reason really that I like color grading so much. It's about control and I love my colors. Controlling colors means specific and targeted is the way to get a really finished looking photo. Color grading is a great way to do that in Lightroom. It's another reason why I'm happy to be using Lightroom in my editing workflow again. Thanks for watching my friends. If you want more Lightroom videos, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you're looking for. I'll do my best to, uh, to make some stuff for you and I'll see you soon. You guys take care and until next time. Adios.